in that particular sector, there is a threat to employment which arises directly because of the takeover by these large corporations, which was after all the reason why there was the opposition fundamentally to the FDI in retail because the idea is that you're going to displace large numbers of petty traders. Uh, and of course now, even though there is an FDI cap, now with online retail being taken over, thrown open uh, to these two companies, Duopoly, that is going to dominate it, that in turn makes a mockery of the cap. In other words, effectively then, the retail sector itself gets thrown open to multinationals and that has a remarkably serious adverse consequence for trade, for employment in the trade sector. But even more serious than just the direct impact on employment in the trade sector is the employment on the employment impact on all kinds of producers, small producers, peasants, petty producers and so on. Because as is well known, companies like Walmart go in for global sourcing. There is going to be a substantial impoverishment in the sense that suppose the local producers do manage to reduce their costs at the expense of their own subsistence in order to prevent outside competition, they would have impoverished themselves anyway. If they do not reduce their cost by cutting into their subsistence, then there of course they would get unemployment. Uh, they, they, they would get unemployed. So either way, there is an impoverishment that threatens large numbers of small and petty producers because of the multinationals' practice of global sourcing. Now in the case of uh, normal retail business, you can have a certain kind of restriction, for instance, 30% local purchase. But in the case of online retail, it's very difficult, oh, it's very difficult to actually implement that kind of restrictions. As a result, online retail is one which becomes very difficult to control by enforcing, uh, you know, local sourcing. And of course, we do not have tariff policies or quantitative restrictions anymore. As a result, there is no way that cheaper imports can actually be kept out. Consequently, if we have this kind of a deal, which effectively then is going to impact on the entire retail sector, we are going to have really a colonial style deindustrialization of the economy. Exactly as had happened in the colonial period, cheaper imports displacing and impoverishing local producers, local traders. Now we shall have a situation where again cheaper imports brought in through the multinationals would impoverish local producers as well as local traders. Now the argument which is put forward quite often, this argument that they're going to generate employment is of course an argument that doesn't stand scrutiny. No matter how much employment they directly generate, the employment they will destroy would be many, many, many times what they generate. But on the other hand, sometimes the argument is put forward that look, cheaper imports are going to help consumers. That basically consumers are going to be better off through cheaper imports, you get cheaper goods and so on, which was exactly the argument that used to be put forward in colonial times to justify the deindustrialization of local producers. Now to that I would just like to make three points and then I'll stop. The first point, of course, is the point that suppose, assuming that it is cheaper, assuming that the consumers do benefit from cheaper uh, uh, imports, nonetheless, the idea that vast numbers of people would get de would get unemployment through this deindustrialization is one that should outweigh any such benefits as far as consumers are concerned. In fact, this is something which has been well known. Gandhiji had said that why should I feel better off by wearing something from Savile Row when I know that the neighbor, my neighboring weaver is unemployed, unemployed as a consequence. I think we as a society must have sufficient compassion not to put consumers' interests, assuming these interests are separate, 
uh, at a higher footing than that of vast numbers of producers who are going to get unemployed. More importantly, I think this whole distinction between a group of consumers and a group of producers is a distinction which is a bogus one because if you find that there is large scale de-industrialization, large scale unemployment, then those are the very people who are also consumers. As a result, the commodities being cheaper is not really going to help them. This is exactly what happened in the colonial times. Namely, the argument was that the peasants would become better off because they buy cheaper imported clothes. But because of the de-industrialization that threw large numbers of weavers out of work, pressure on land increased, rents increased, real wages fell, and as a result, much of the peasantry and agricultural laborer households experience declines in their incomes. So this whole distinction is something which actually is a bogus distinction that first of all producers themselves are consumers and of course even if directly producers, you can distinguish in producers and consumers, the deindustrialization and unemployment of producers is also going to imply that those who currently stand on a different footing from the producers would also become worse off as the consequence of multiplied effects. This is a deal which must be opposed and it must be opposed because its consequences are extremely serious and of course uh, this is something which all of us must really raise our voice to oppose. Thank you.